Our next speaker is Dr. Mario. He graduated of the dental hygiene program at the University of Lisbon uh, and obtained a bachelor's degree of science in dental hygiene from the University of Washington. He has a master's degree in health psychology from ISPA University Institute, and he has a PhD, and he is a PhD student at the University of Lisbon, psychological studies. He works as a teacher since 1990. He's also an adjunctive teacher and director of dental hygiene program uh, at the Porta League Health School in Portugal. He lives in Portugal where he also works as clinical behavioral dental hygiene. Uh, please help me uh, to welcome Dr. Mario. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, super. Uh, let me see. I don't know if I'm going to connect my camera because there was a small delay on the um, when Franca was speaking. There was a delay on the image, and I think it disturbs more than uh, it helps you. So, uh, and on the other hand, I don't know how to connect my camera. So, if you hear me, that's fantastic. I'm going to share my screen. That will be another struggle. Let's see if I'm able to do it because it's supposed to be on the left side and it's nothing there what's happened okay aha now it is okay let me share so please can you help me if to see if can you see can you see the slides We can, it's clear. Yeah, can you see it? Yes. Okay, super. Um, thank you so much for this invitation, for the invitation to speak in the first international online conference. It's always fantastic to feel that we are the first. Um, it's almost seven hours in Portugal. I think we had a little bit delay. Um, Probably I will try to do it in half an hour if it's okay for you because um, because of this delay and I'm going to try to help you and see if I can do it in half an hour. Is that okay? Okay, dokie. It should be okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, I, as I as I was saying, it's always nice to be the, to be part to be part of the first thing. The first international online, the the first contest, song contest, or something like that. So it's it's really cool to to be on the um, on the on the a, a first thing. Um, also, thank you for your kind introduction about what I'm doing. It's I've been a dental hygienist for many many years. Um, and I was struggling about dental studies or psychological studies. And I end up always studying psychology because I really like this idea that um, we are professionals. We have a lot of knowledge, but our main tool, uh, our clay, our piece of clay where we make, where, 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 and we, the clay that we help to transform in the piece of art or whatever you want to call it's the patient. And so we, I always loved this interaction between me and uh, my patients and, or the patients in, in a broad sense. And that was always the big mystery and always the big science for me. So that's why I turn, turn up to study psychology all the time. And that it's, uh, and I'm saying this because I will be talking a lot of this behavioral things and psychology, even if I want to talk about inter cameras. And I want to really, this is the main objective of the um, the talk is to understand the importance of these devices for for us as health professionals, as a way to boost or to help us uh, to improve our patients or 
our clinic efficacy uh, and also uh, behaviors that can help patients to promote oral health. So I bring the cameras to this issue, to this conference, not only because it's a cool gadget, but because I really believe, and we, we had data on that, that interoral cameras can help us to uh, the relation we have to, with our patients. And if we have a good relation with our patients, if we can make a bridge between us and the patients, our objectives and the needs of the patient, we will promote, we will help them, uh, they are our health, as Frank has said before. If they have good behaviors or if they have the right behaviors uh, in our health, it's very easy to maintain our health. Easy is not a good word. You will see it's, going, it's difficult. Easy in the sense of, in the theoretical way. We know why, we know how to, to treat. Uh, now we need to understand how can we help them to achieve that. It's a different thing. So we are back. The world was temporarily closed, uh, but we survive. I hope we learn as human beings that this is this is very fragile. Things can happen at any moment. It's like the it's like in in, in our mouse, you know, between the um, to be in balance and to be in balance, the, the dysbiotic things and the symbiotic environmental. So it's it will go like that. Uh, so it's important to think ahead, to to have to act in a way that we can promote things, uh, that we can plan things, um, and make it uh, more sustainable. For for being, we need to be ready for these kind of things. But in one way, we were as human beings, we deal very well with the uh, the situation. We are back. To in Portugal, we are back to clinic. I just picked these um, pictures to show what the clinical, the, the direction of my clinic decide to use to avoid aerosols in a dental hygiene appointment and also in some dental uh, appointments. We use this for cover uh, because, as you heard before, aerosolization is very, very dangerous. and at least uh, the argument for this issue is we can control a lot of aerosols and you can see we use also the the um, the high volume evacuator here so with all these uh, things working together we really believe that we can reduce we have a lot of research about this vol high volume evacuators. We don't have research about all these new things. We we heard and we 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 heard that most of them doesn't work. Well, I mean, this was not very expensive. It makes all the sense. We clean before we clean. It's very easy to clean all the aerosols that keeps here in the top. So it's not good for our bags. We have to learn a little bit how we work. But well, that was the solution that the directors of the clinic decided to use and i have to say it's kind of interesting we have to wait but um, it worked it is working so covid 19 was a pandemic um it was very bad for us as our health professionals but on the other hand it opened a lot of door because our health professionals as we have a particular important role to play in this uh, in this world, in this uh, situation, because we have this important role to play in keeping our cavity cavity healthy. Not only because it's part of our health, but because, for example, what we do, the, uh, dental hygienists, dental prophylaxis, it strengthens the immunocompetence at the point of entry of the virus and helps to avoid infection or to mitigate its course. There are some research, uh, Ro Professor Roland Frankenberger was saying this and was publishing this. So we heard that it's in the saliva, a lot of um, the viral infection. Um, so if we, if we control the oral health, we are, giving, we are doing a great, uh, we are having a, an important role in the health of the patient and also in the in the security of the people, the persons around the patient, ourselves and the community. So um, on the other, I think we have a lots of arguments to improve, to increase the importance. We already know that it's very important, our appointment, what we do as, 
uh, dental hygienists, we, we now, after this crisis, we have another argument, another very important argument to continue work in the way we know and how go as good as we know, because um, it's, really, it's really an important factor, even in, in this COVID uh, situation. And because it's all about biofilms, and biofilms are in the mouth, uh, and we need to control them, as Franca said, it's, um, it's, a, it's a huge job, it's a lifetime work for the patients and for us to help them. And um, we need to find ways. We, we have the tools. But as also uh, uh, Franca said, we have the tools, but if you look to the data, disease is out there, even worse than ever. So what's happened? We have good tools, but why people is, are not using? So probably is not only the tools, it's, the, um, it's more than the tools, is how people end up to use those tools. And those, that's, factor that small detail is much more important than the tool per se because we know and this is data that we have forever that it's tailor the magic word repeat and individually tailor oral hygiene is the key to achieve periodontal oh, health excuse Sorry. me uh, dr mario uh yes? your screen disappeared so can you share it again really yes okay Sorry. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to behave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Because it's still sharing, I'm going to do it again. Okay. Okay, and now? Um, I see a... Okay, it's still loading, I believe. Okay, now we can see it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, sorry for this technical. Well, this is the dark side of the online things. Um, but anyway, um, every, every time you need, just please interrupt me. Um, so, as I was saying, Taylor is the most important thing. We need to adapt to every patient. And all the patients are different. That's the magic thing. So, that is something we should never forget. Unfortunately, it's like we have a lot of, of um, a lot of knowledge, and it's like we divide things, us and them. Is that we know we have the knowledge, and we we give we teach everything. We give all the instructions to the patient. We put we put all all our passion to the patient, but sometimes that is not correct, because we are treating them looking to our own perspective. We think what is important for the patient, it's what we think, it's, it's, it's based on my own perspective. Please listen to them first. See what are the objectives of the patient. Of course, what we know is correct and we know the right tools because we study this area, but we need to adapt what we know to the objectives of the patient. And sometimes it takes time. Don't rush, listen, talk, create a relation and that will help us to achieve the result with, that, with them. Don't make a gap between us and them because we believe that we are completely right. We may be right, but we need them to understand that. And th that takes time. So just telling them to brush and floss is not working. It's more than that, you know? Just telling them, giving instructions, and giving instructions, don't get me wrong, it's important. But if that is the only strategy, we end up not working. Look to the data. We still have a lot, a lot of disease. We still have a lot of gingivitis. So we we have these great great tools. We know how to evaluate, but we need to have we need to have a strategy, an efficient strategy to help them to change the behavior. And the strategy is not just show things. The strategy is really very, very, very um, particular, sensitive, is what we call a precision behavior change. Every person is different. We don't have time to talk about psychology, and I already talked a, a little bit about that with you. But, you know, um, people don't, we are not, all of us, we are not ready to change. We are not on the same level. 
some of us are pre-intentional. We don't know if you want to change. We don't know that we even need to change. Some of us are thinking to change. Uh, others are already ready to change. And according with this level of, according with this characteristic that we have, or the, or the patients have, we need different strategies. It's not always the same strategy. And if our only strategy is to give instructions, we will fail. We need risk communication. Then if they, have, if they think they want to change, we need strategic planning to help them. And then when people are doing things, we need to help them to continue to doing things. It's not enough to do it for one month. I need it for six months. I need it for a lifetime. I need to build an habit. I need to build a, a relation with the behavior that longs more time. Let's long in the wrong time, in the long run, sorry. So we need to do things. We need to, do, to change the perception of the patient. We need to create the goals with them. We need to reinforce what they know and reinforce the technique. We need to help them to self-monitoring what they are doing, how they are doing, where they should reach. So that we need to give a good feedback. This is really important. And sometimes you say, okay, come on, but that's psychology. How can I do that? What is goal setting? How can I do that in a clinic? Well, that's where the cameras can be a solution because with the interoral camera, I can help them to understand the goals, what I want them, what I want them to do. I can help them to reinforce what they are doing or not doing. When we look to the pictures like here, I can say, we can self, they can self monitoring, they can look and this, we can discuss, and it's a good feedback. It's not a critique, it's not how they are cleaning themselves, it's they, how they are treating the gingivitis. It's not how they are brushing and cleaning their teeth, it's they are tr maintaining the health, maintaining the periodontal health, and avoiding and decreasing the, the, the bleeding index. It's all about the perception. For example, if I ask you, you cannot answer me, but you look to this picture and what do you see? You can write on the comments, right? And then I will see it later because now I'm not watching the comments. Imagine I say, I want you to see a seal. Please, this is a seal, a beautiful seal from the, from the, the North Sea. She eat fish. She's so sweet. And most of you are thinking, he's crazy. We are not seeing a seal. Where is the seal? So in order for you, and for me, it's very clear because I know the trick. I know the profession. I know, I know what I'm doing. But this is what's happened with our patients. Sometimes we know everything. It's so clear for us, but it's not clear for the patient. So we need a strategy, a communication on a communicational strategy in order to help them to change their perception. We need to help them to change and help them to change. Uh, and I hope this works because this is online. It's something that it's not quick. Sometimes it's, it took time. Uh, it took a strategy. Never, when we have a strategy, when you have a treatment plan, a dental hygiene treatment plan, don't think about six months. Think, think about one year, three years, five years. Because changing the perception of the patient, it took a lot of time. It took a lot of skills. It's easy, but it's difficult because you need to study, you need to understand. But when I change the perception, when you have the time and the patient to wait for me, probably now you can see the seal. So it's not only instructions. It's not only saying to you something and you do it. You need time for the patient to understand what you want in order to them to understand the perception. So that's where interoral cameras can help. I can say you have a caries, but if I show you the small carry, and if I show my patient the black, the plaque, the dental plaque that is around the caries, then I can change the perception why he or she needs to floss or needs to clean or needs the interproximal brush or need to use a toothpick or use, need to use a plastic toothpick or a jet, whatever. 
what is best for him, what is efficient for him, where we obtain results for him. So we need to control the interproximal spaces. We need to avoid new caries, new gingivitis. And cameras, sometimes they help us for the patients to understand where we want to go. There are lots of cameras in the market from the less expensive to the 3,000 euros one, like this one, the, the SoproCare. Um, we have a lot of technology that we can use in our clinics nowadays. They are, they help us to record, is a visual record, help us on treatment planning, they help us on diagnose. As I said, they help us on changing the perception of the patient. Uh, they are very good for education. And now that we have these new diagnostic cameras, as you can see here, they help us to diagnose the gingivitis and also they help us to diagnose caries. So it's a, it's a great tool. It's a great tool to also to show the patient that we are different, that we are worried with them, that we want, that we are using the top of the heart, the, the set of the heart technology in order to help them. So it helps us to, to have an open conversation with the patient. So it's good for the communication. It helps to contact, contextual knowledge. I'm saying, look, we need to change the way you brush, not because I want, but because I'm worried about all this staining and how the gingiva is going down and how this infection is so chronic. And also if the patient say, oh, I don't like the stain, you can say, look, where is the stain? It's on the back. So we need to improve on the back because if you are a smoker, the risk is bigger. So it always helps us to contest, to give a contest, to give a visual effect to the patient that it came from their mouth. It's not a book, a booklet from an, uh, a stranger, it's from their own mouth. So we know, sorry, we know that interaural cameras work. Uh, we did some research. It enables the patients to see areas of greater accumulation and retention. So if I want my patient to brush the molars, I can say, look, you are doing well, but look what's happened. When we are on the back molar, we are not working well. So, and also here in the interproximal area, we need to do something here. Do you heard about interproximal brushes? Or this is the reason why I use interproximal brush. So, and the patients like to see the pictures. If we don't criticize them, and that is a horrible mistake to say, look how dirty it is. It's almost forbidden to say that. It's always a in a clinical sense that we should use the pictures to give feedback to the patient. So um, again, we did um, in this research, research it helps to, um, to self-regulate the dental hygiene behaviors in the patient and also it helps to maintain across time. We did a study and we, we, um, we studied for eight months randomized control trial study and we maintained the results, which was really cool to see this maintenance. I have some data, but you can read the article, so you don't need to look at this. But just to see, um, for example, when you use the camera, the, the this level of self-efficacy uh, to help the patient to keep on track, it always increased during, this is the four-month study, not the eight-month study, but yet also in the bleeding, uh, it was the, the other slide, even the bleeding decreased in the group that we used the interaural camera. So again, it was not the device that we use to clean the interproximal spaces. It was how we teach the patient, how we create a story for the patient that he remember and continue to use. And that is really, really important. The device, it's up to you. And of course, we have data and the data is very clear. Interproximal, day, uh, interproximal brushes are better than floss. Floss is better in in the in, in some areas. Um, interdental picks, the the plastics or the wood stick, they also work if you don't like or, or if you don't have money to use the the regular and uh, interproximal brushes. So there are a lot, a world of possibilities that we can use and we can help the patient. And sometimes they start using one thing because they are ready to change to another material. And then with time and when with this real kind of communication that we build with the patient, they are able to change in the direction we want and we know it's important. Just to see some examples, this is why the camera is fantastic. 
uh, I can take a picture and say, look, the way you brush is amazing, but can you see here this level of bacteria that they are growing in this area? It's not possible to reach with a, just with a toothbrush. We need to think about how can we reach this area. And then we start building a relation. This is a small video just to see. Imagine I'm showing this to the patient. I'm just saying that. Look, I'm so happy the way you are brushing. But we need to just, um, look, this is what I'm worried. And that's why, I, this is why I talk with my patient. Look, amazing brushing, but we are not controlling in the between. So we need to be aware of that. And look at this, look at this detail. I never said to my patient, you are doing, you are having a bad dental hygiene. You are not brushing well. You are not cleaning well. I always said, you are doing a great job with your brush, but we need to improve the space between the teeth. Because as you can see, there is something here that it shouldn't be, and probably we have an infection, as you can see, it's so red. And even I can show the bleeding. So this helps the patient to understand that he's talking with a health professional and not with a cleaning person. And that helps them to change the behavior. And so these new cameras, we can go, you know, this, this is a, a diagnostic camera, which is fantastic because we can use transluminescence and you can see dental plaque. The orange is the old one, the yellow is new, and also the gingivitis. So it's a, another level of patient perception. And here you can see, you can show the lingual size of the molars, which is of the lower teeth, which normally we have more plaque. And we can always give the good, the good, uh, the positive advices first. You see, you are doing well, except these areas. Look what's happened. And then you show the good things and the bad things. And you see, again, the interhero cameras have this characteristic of building the story that is related with the patient. And again, never a critic, but also a constructive relation with the patient. And believe me, they will be worried, you know. Like for example, this patient here, we can I can say, look, uh, you are doing well, but you you see this um, uh, white areas here. Can you brush, please? Can I see how you brush? Then the patient starts to brush, and then in the end, I can say, you see, because you are not controlling these areas, we have gingivitis here. So we need to think, how can I help you to control uh, this area of the gingiva where we could see this kind of bacteria? And I, I'm worried about with the inflammation and you are doing orthodontic treatment, so you should avoid that. This kind of relation we build with the patient, also it's important because then they, they can understand how we are worried with them. And this is very important for the dental clinic, for the treatment of the dentist. So then the dental hygienist is really, we are already part of the team, but we are like the coaches. We are like the communication directors we are like the producers of the of the treatment if they are the directors the the, the, dent, the dentists we are the producers we help them that all the treatment end well maintain well and then when they want to come back they want to bring their family because they know that we are worried with them again this is another level i can see i can say to my patient look you have plaque in this area. This is bacteria. It's making infection. And then I change the mode because this is um, a SoproCare camera with a perio mode. And in the perio mode, I can I can show them the inflammation. So I can make a connection between plaque and inflammation. And this is this is more than theory. When I look to my mouse and I can see the problem, I change. It's not automatic is not magic, come on. I'm not saying this is good for everybody, that everybody will change in a minute. It Probably some will change faster than others, but this is a very good way, at least for the data we collect, is a very good way in help them to change self-regulatory process of behavior changing. Again, look, this is so cool. After four months, I can say to my patient, Congratulations! You are, your the way you are brushing is much better. Look how look the difference. 
now it's time to talk about in the proximal species. We still have bacteria. What can we do? Yeah, I forgot to use the, that small, the, the interproximal brushes you told me about. You see why it was important? Can you see the bacteria here? We still have inflammation. You see? You see how I have different arguments? It's not an argument based on what I want for you. You should do this because I am the boss. It's not. The argument is based in the relation that, look, you did well, and I'm worried because you need to improve a little bit more because you still have disease. And this makes all the difference, people. Again, sometimes people are so, so good on brushing that they don't understand why we want them to control the interproximal spaces. And then we have to talk. And then this is one year after. And one year after, when you show this picture to the patient, they are like so proud. You have to do, if you have the camera, do this. Take pictures, use the feedback. For them, it's amazing to see how they change, how they has, in the past, they has plaque there, and now they don't have. And feedback is an important, really important uh, psychological factor to change behavior. Also, I can take a picture and the patient explain me how they are brushing. And I can say, you see, you are not touching in the in the in the in this area here. That's why you have this huge inflammation in your calculus. You're doing a good job here and not and you are afraid to touch there. So let let's remove all this debris and then I, let me help you to treat this area. And then you change for a very soft brush. And this was a very wrong brush that the patient was using. It hurts him. Uh, and so you understand why soft brushes are important. And then after, I don't have, I think I don't, I don't know if I have the, but this, this patient was very nice, but patients like this are easy to change than the, the ones with just a small amount. So anyway, you see disease, you must see a disease when you look to this. You can help use the camera to help the patient to see this to see what they have to change. You can use the camera to see how it was and the, how, it, how they need and how important it is to keep it like this. So it's, an, it's a multi-level strategy. You can use it in different levels and you can use it to establish rapport with the patient, to exchange information, also to summarizing like this one. And then when the patient come back, you can help them to uh, to again to access the clinical oral health status and to give uh, feedback. So the interoral camera can be part of in all parts or in all um, moments of the appointment. So it's before, probably not when we are providing treatment. That's not that's not necessary. But again, when you think is necessary, you can really use the camera to help you to improve the important moments of our. Uh, dental hygiene appointment or dental appointment because this can be used to, or, to all the oral health professionals. So to summarize, there are many models of camera. Pick the one you think is better for you. Maybe start with this cheaper one and then increase on time. There are amazing models. There are interorals and interoral and diagnose cameras, uh, inter diagnose and interoral cameras. Some of them, the interorals just to take pictures, the diagnose, they help us to see the plaque, they help us to see caries. It's important not to criticize the patient. It's important to dry the field before you take the pictures or to show something to the patient. You have to believe, come, it's not easy to use the camera. If you have a, a screen in front of you for the patient to look, the best way is to use the camera looking to the screen. And for that, you need training. It sometimes is very difficult. Don't So you need to believe. If not, you will quit. It will take time to have the right skills. But when you have time, when you, have, when you practice enough, it's just an amazing result that you have in the end. This is a, a, a study from 2009 from Pentapati. It's very interesting to see the clinical applications of interoral cameras. So please take a read of in this to this article. Um, the current perspectives, it's there, it's a very interesting article. But as I say, you need to train, you need to believe, and 
there are a lot of they are starting to have some research that is saying to us it's clear to us that it could be a really good tool to help us to to change and uh, to to improve our patients and patients need to improve during their all all their life look to the the biggest tennis players in the world they still practice every day they still need the, the coach to say that you are not doing this correct or that correct and they know it's important and they know how to do it but this is a long life um, learning when you use the camera it's increased the curiosity of the patient the curiosity for their own mouse and their curiosity about oh this dental hygienist is different they are doing things that i'm not used to so they get involved and we have when you have a patient involved you have a patient that you can treat that you can help so you can use these tools like the interorals to improve your methods i don't i think you don't need to necessarily change everything but the, you can use it to improve the future will be amazing because the camera we use today will be i don't know what is going to be in the future 3d cameras 3d scanners we will have we probably can create the mouse of the patient in a 3d model and we travel inside and we see where the bacteria are it will be a, a beautiful future so we need to adapt we need to think that we can improve it's all about how we adapt remember charles darwin how we adapt to the new generations how we adapt to the technologies because we still have a lot of disease and we need to do something to change that. This was, this is my view of the field. This is how I, this is one of the ways that I think it could help. There are probably a lot of other ways. Please study, read articles, discuss. Congratulations for this amazing uh, event. We being online discussing things. This is my email. You can always send me an email and we can discuss, I can share with you my articles uh, or any other things. Thank you so much for being on, the, on that side. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you about these topics that I love. Sorry about my English. Thank you, Dr. Mario, for the great presentation. Uh, I see that there are no questions posted at the uh, questions uh, that zone. So, We'll be moving on to the uh, uh, next presenter, but before we do that, uh, on behalf of the uh, Saudi Dental Hygiene Society, we would like to present to you this certificate of appreciation for uh, your contribution to uh, today's session. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, sir. Uh, so moving on to our last so speaker me. for today's session. Uh, our speaker is uh, Dr. Consolata Pironi. Uh, uh, she has a certificate degree in dental hygiene from uh, Fawcett School for Dental Hygienists and an associate degree of science in dental hygiene by the Northwestern University in Boston. She holds a master's degree in preventive dentistry by the University of La Sapienza. Uh, Dr. Pironi is a, a teacher over for over 25 years, and she is currently a faculty member in dental hygiene school at the University of Turin, Italy. She is an expert clinician and practices the profession as a dental hygienist in different private practices in Northern Italy. She is also a consultant and clinical coordinator for the uh, EMEA area for Hugh Freddy. Uh, Dr. Peroni is a co-author in few professional dental hygiene and preventive books, and she is a speaker for, of several national and international continuing educational programs. Uh, Dr. Pironi will be talking about oral biofilms, where, what, and how to remove in COVID-19 experience. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Pironi. Dr. Pironi? You may share your screen now. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Pironi. You hear me? Dr. Consolata? 
Are you with us? I think the consulate is experiencing some technical problems or uh, connection problems. Uh, we'll be waiting for her to get ready. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hello? That's your consulate, huh? I'm gone with Dr. Consolato. Mr. Abdullah, do you think you can reach her on uh, her phone if you have it? Yes, just give me a moment. I'll get right. back to you. Okay. All right, she's back. Let's see. Make a presenter. Dr. Consolata? Can you hear us, doctor? I can. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, we see you now. Great. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. But I can't get to my PowerPoint. Uh, you have that loaded with your feedback. All right, uh, Abdullah, can you um, stop the screen sharing from your side? I'm not sure what's going on. Hello. Yes, yes, Mr. Abdullah. Abdullah? Sorry uh, for the technical difficulties. If you could just give me a second, I'll try to figure it out. Ciao Laura. Sì. Dr. Consolata, can you try and um share your screen or put on your presentation now?
Dr. Consolata, Mr. Abdullah, okay, I'm back, I will be able, inshallah, to share my screen, okay, just give me